Hurricane Orlean is rapidly intensifying in the Eastern Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 2nd. Right now we have another rapidly intensifying hurricane in the form of Orlean approaching the western coast of Mexico and Tropical Storm Roki holding on and about to turn extra tropical shortly. We've had 70 storms this year so far and we're still code red. In the Atlantic though, at least that's not the area of focus right now as much, but there are two areas of interest, one of them with a higher chance of development near the Cape Verde Islands and expected to shoot off northwards, another one which is a wave trailing through the central Atlantic and has a small chance of development as it approaches the Windward Islands. In the Eastern Pacific we've got Orlean which is now rapidly intensifying, a trend that's been happening for a couple of hours at least, and another area of interest to its southwest which is that has a decent chance of developing uh, as it potentially moves northwest but the track seems unclear. In the western pacific it's only Roki uh, finishing off this recent spate of tropical cyclones in the western pacific and there's nothing much on the forecast in the next few days either and so we've not marked any systems for possible development. In the southern indian ocean though we could get a fourth tropical cyclone forming before the generally accepted start of season, a 20% chance at the moment, but that could rise as this system develops later on in the week. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery. First of all, looking at the Atlantic Ocean, you can see this really massive burst of dry air across the whole Gulf Coast region towards the East Coast, filling in the gap left by Almighty Ian. Its remnants still continuing towards the northeast, but barely traceable at this point. In the eastern Pacific, it's quite clear to see Hurricane Orlean, and even from here, you can see it's a fairly small eye. I think they had it at actually 16 miles wide um, and deepening substantially uh, in the last few frames there. And looking at the recent imagery of the storm, here it is on visible uh, in the later hours of this evening. And you can see just how well it's been looking there on those last daylight views of the satellite. Uh, the eye has really dropped out, uh, the cloud cover has uh, receded and the stadium effect is building as this eye deepens with a uh, rapidly increasing uh, wind speed around it and the cloud tops that are blowing up. Uh, and a rapidly dropping air pressure which was indicated earlier on by the uh, hurricane hunters and that appears to have been continued. National Hurricane Center confident enough to issue an update statement based on satellite imagery earlier uh, suggesting that the storm had gone from uh, 80 to 105 miles per hour and they will have another update by the time this one goes out the tropical weather bulletin which could have even higher wind speeds this could now become a major hurricane if it hasn't already by the time this update drops so that's one of the biggest talking points right now in the western pacific though this is how it looks at the moment you can see the last 24 hours there and roki moving off northeastwards and it's now partially exposed center of circulation and rapidly turning post-tropical. Uh, we've decided to keep it on as a tropical system for probably another six hours at least uh, before we make the call for post-tropical, but it's pretty much there at this point. And in the Indian Ocean, this is a wide view of the whole basin and the southwest Indian Ocean there, or the southern Indian Ocean off the coast of Indonesia. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tropical thunderstorms right now and out of that large area of low pressure we could see potential for another cyclone. In the southern hemisphere further east the Australian region looking quiet a few thunderstorms blowing up over Indonesia uh, and looking towards the southeast a frontal system moving through New Zealand and a few thunderstorms near Fiji. Elsewhere though nothing much of note. Sea surface temperatures at this point this is what they're looking like and will we have Orlean, you can see that old icon there, it's now a category 2, not a 1. Sea surface temperatures are around 28 
or 29 degrees Celsius, rising to 30 plus as it reaches the coast of Mexico. NHC is still gambling on wind shear being the main cause of weakening before it reaches land. National, uh, sorry, in the Atlantic there, uh, still a 30 degree area there in the mid, uh, the central Atlantic off the US East Coast. Still fairly warm temperatures, 28 degrees plus, quite commonplace. The Indian Ocean is fairly warm even in the Southern Hemisphere, 28 degrees quite easily there, 30 degrees off the coast of India which is looking out for potential um, late season activity. Western Pacific is still boiling with temperatures up above 30 degrees in large parts of the Philippine Sea and where Roki is right now it's just about to drop off that cliff. At the moment though still supporting tropical storm conditions but only for a little bit longer. And let's see if it's helped by an anomaly, and it looks like it is a slight warm anomaly in that area, uh, but a very high warm anomaly further north. And look at the really cold temperatures in the uh, eastern Pacific there in the uh, tropicals, in the equatorial zone that is. Strong La Nina looks like it's set to continue here, and the Atlantic is generally above average, uh, only by a little bit in some areas, but look at the oceanic heat content in the Caribbean Sea. Extremely high and concerns if anything else enters this area, it's going to go the same way as Ian. In the Eastern Pacific, only small amounts of OHC, but uh, Orlean is heading straight for it. And in the Western Pacific, still fairly high amounts across most of that tropical zone, looking very good indeed. So what do the computer models have for us right now? This is what the GFS is showing for the next five days. First of all, in the Atlantic region, you can see that wave that potentially becomes a brief tropical storm. And then that other system that actually does become a tropical storm and possibly a hurricane as it passes the Cape Verde Islands to the west and then moves off towards the north. It eventually uh, dies off quite quickly as it turns west again at a higher latitude and there's no chance of affecting anywhere in the western Atlantic. But keep your eye on that uh, potential wave in heading towards the uh, Windward Islands. Here's Orlean and uh, GFS suggesting that it strengthens a bit before weakening, but it has strengthened already a lot more than this model predicted, so I guess we throw it out the window. It also still doesn't pick up on the other area of interest towards the southwest of uh, Orlean. It actually picks up on a different system further towards the east that develops into a tropical storm instead. There it is, developing at first towards day three, day four, October the 5th there, and becoming a tropical storm and plowing into Mexico again. And here now is the Southwest Indian Ocean or the South Indian Ocean region. And you can see in the five days, we start to see something develop, a little bit of rotation and some tropical storm force winds, but overall it doesn't get its act together fully in that five day period. So we'll keep watching that zone for a potential fourth early season tropical cyclone. We've already had three. One of them got named Ashley last week and people may have missed that because it coincided with all the drama with Hurricane Ian. And looking at rainfall expectations for the coast of Mexico from Orlean right now and you can see that the rainfall is uh, quite large in some areas but to be honest uh, when it moves inland that falls quite a way. Uh, only three inches expected towards Tepic, uh, around four inches to the south of... Um, I've forgotten the name already, Reda Vallata and further north possibly one inch for Culiacan and uh, towards uh, Manzanillo possibly two inches down there as well and Mazatlan perhaps one and a half inch and that one and a half inch is around uh, 40 millimeters of rain so maximums there across Mexico probably 100 millimeters as we take a look at that rain chart the worst places of course being the coastal areas into the longer range, this is day 5 to 10, what happens to that tropical storm, as I alluded to earlier, it dies off rather quickly. There's also another little low pressure system near the Leeward Islands there that might have a chance of developing later on in that uh, period. But generally a quiet Atlantic and that's definitely what we want to see. Uh, but there is still that chance of systems starting to trend up and this model run could change as we take a look at it maybe tomorrow or in a, few, in a future day. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, that system does develop into a tropical storm possibly. Certainly gets the rotation, whether it gets the winds all the way around. Uh, it's a wait and see game, but in the longer range, GFS thinks that it might once again pull it off. And with the other systems, it's uh, 
uptrended a bit in the end. It didn't look, it started to look likely, then it didn't look likely, then it looked likely again, then it just formed in most of the last three occasions. So, well, we'll see what happens with that one. That's all the serious stuff out of the way, so I encourage you to take a look at our merch store by scanning that barcode, and you can take a look at all we've got to offer, including um, uh, bespoke animations and our still waiting for Hone t-shirt, which is probably going to outlive us all at this rate uh, if Hone still doesn't form. In the extremely long range, this is day uh, 10 to 16, the Western Pacific does show a, a new round of activity. You'll see three systems popping up, one of them forming in the Central Pacific, so that might be your Hone, the other one forming near the uh, Mariana Islands and becoming a substantial system and the third one sort of popping up in between near the end of that sequence there you'll see it again in a moment the first one to form is the eastern one some of its energy lingering further west becomes that second system and the third system uh, much further towards the west three tropical storms possibly at the same time there and here's another little interesting uh, feature in the 10 to 16 day period but this is a long way out and may not happen but usually towards the later season you might see a higher chance of systems like this a storm forming over southern vietnam into the gulf of thailand and probably becoming a tropical storm as it enters the andaman sea uh, that is something that could happen but is quite rare um, but nonetheless to be honest it probably doesn't become a tropical storm on the pacific side i think it only just manages it once it crosses the malay peninsula um, as it enters the andaman sea there interesting well, on this day in 2002, October 2nd, 20 years ago to the day now, Hurricane Lily was approaching the Gulf Coast of the United States as a ferocious Category 4 storm, uh, but it was let off, it was a big let off for the coast in the end when it weakened I think to a Category 2 before landfall thanks to I think it was Shear coming to the rescue uh, in the end before it made landfall. Kyle was also a tropical storm and Higos was about to pass away over Hokkaido, Japan. But take a look at that International Space Station image of Lily there. That one's a keeper, I think. Well then, back to this year, and it's been a while since we read out these names. The next name on the Atlantic storm naming list is Julia, or Julia, depending on how you want to pronounce that. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Pain, and in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. In the West Pacific right now, our next name is Sonka, and in the North Indian Ocean, we're still waiting for Citrang. I've been waiting for that one for a little while as well now. Uh, who, which one will become the 71st of the year? It's still up in the air. In the Southern Hemisphere, in the Australian region, next up is Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean, now Belita, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. Fingers crossed, we'll be back again with more regular ones, starting with this one and tomorrow night. <laughs>